Hey, what's up YouTube? Today, this video is about upper and lower control arms on a 2000 GMC Sonoma, which should also be the same as an S10 or um, S10 Blazer, that's two wheel drive, I would imagine. <clears throat> and the issue here is, is doing your, your bushings yourself. Is it really cost effective? Is it feasible? Is it something that you can do yourself? And I would have to say, after trying, that the answer is no. And I'll let you be the judge of that, and you decide. So, I did some research. I needed my, my bushings done because my truck was starting to drive its own way on the freeway, sometimes, depending on what, how hard of a bump I hit. And the truck is 18 years old. Um, just time to do the job. So local shops in my area is about $600 to do the job. Okay, so then I started researching what's involved in doing it myself. I checked out some YouTube and the general consensus was, oh, you just rent the tool from the auto parts store. You can just push your old ones out, push your new ones in, save a bunch of money. Well, let me let you know that it's not that simple um you know i've seen some other videos of people doing it um, on some older s10s their control arms are different um i've seen one video this guy named chris fix he's got a youtube channel but those are different control arms <clears throat> and those are what i i would call their box control arms they're um let me explain what I mean by that. So this is my upper control arm. And you can see this is just a stamped piece of steel. There is no support. Um, nothing like that. And these are my lower control arms. Again, this is just a stamped piece of steel. It's flat. The machine comes and punches this. And it folds it all and does it all in one shot. Boom. And that's it. What I would consider to be boxed is if there was like a piece of steel welded here. Okay, that would give support to both of these ears. Okay, or maybe if they welded a tube in here between the two holes, that would I would consider that to be boxed. Okay, there is nothing like that. This is actually the bushing right here. So <clears throat> um they're not they're not supported in any way, and that creates a huge problem. Okay, so I, I decided, well, it looks like a lot of people have success, um, you know, pushing out their own bushings and uh, replacing them. So I'm going to do it myself. So I had to go to my local auto parts store. They ordered me all new bushings from Moog and I rented the tool. So at this point, I'm $300 into it and I get my $100 back whenever I bring the tool back but it was basically roughly like thirty dollars per control arm for the bushings okay um yeah something like that it was, it was, it was close enough so anyways so I got this tool okay so I come home put my truck up blow it all apart get all my suspension pulled out and I start pushing the bushings out and I started with this one and things weren't going so hot so the tool that I rented okay supposed to be this master control arm tool or whatever okay it bolts on here and it pushes this way well one thing it does is you see this washer here this lock washer it destroys that in the process Okay, there's no way to clamp on the other side of this and push. So you have to push the washer and everything out, and it tears the washer up. And the new bushings do not come with a replacement washer. So I just put this one back together without the washer. And this side, you can see it's bent and gnarled up. The other thing is the stupid tool bends the crap out of the control arms right here. You see, that's straight, relatively, compared to this. So, this was a lot of work and aggravation. I took and sanded 
and wire brush the outside of this and use penetrating oil and everything I gave it the best chance I could to work okay and that was the result that I got so then we move on to the other one okay and tried to clean it up push it through and this one is now just bent beyond use it's not usable okay in my opinion I'm not going to use this thing I'm not going to trust that the uh, geometry is the way that it's supposed to be anymore so now I'm pissed and you know now I got a control arm that's junk so now I'm like all right well I'll just have to get another one let me move on to the next one so we get to the lower control arms and guess what the tool for the upper control arms does not service the lower control arms and I'm screwed at this point so now I can't do my lower control arms and now I can't even put my truck back together because I bent one of the upper control arms so I got the control arms out I call my local machine shop who I know has a press and asked them how much it would be to me to bring in the control arms and then push out my old bushings and push in the new ones they told me two hundred dollars and I, I was like, what? I said, no, you, you misunderstand. I said, the control arms are out of the truck. They're loose. All you got to do is push them out and push the new ones in. And he says, <clears throat> yeah, I understood you perfectly fine. The rate is $200. I said, well, why is that? He said, well, typically it takes a half hour per control arm to do, unless they're bad or really bad, then it takes about an hour to do each control arm. And I said, man, I, that's just, no, I'm not going to do that. So I devised my own way of pushing it out. <clears throat> and I basically built a bolt press out of a bunch of pieces of a four-wheel drive um, hub service press kit. And basically it didn't work. I mean, you see this side, what I did was I pushed the rubber out, okay? The rubber came out, but the actual bushing sleeve didn't. Then I clamp my device over here, and you can see I bent the hell out of this one. So now this control arm is useless. So now we're, you know, we're not doing too hot at this point. And on top of it all, you know, when I'm sitting there looking at my truck all together and doing the assessment, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I just need bushings. Because the rubber on my ball joints still look good. Now, these ball joints are still in good shape. I, they're stiff. There's no slop in them whatsoever. But all of the boots are torn. <coughs> I know they're not torn from a pickle fork. I know how to pop these loose without doing a pickle fork. So, that was another part that I was not counting on, was having to replace the rubbers on these ball joints. And, after some research, come to find out they're not available. You cannot change just the rubber on these ball joints. Yeah, they sell some um, universal cups that go on tie rods that might fit, but it's not the right part. It's not designed to be on there. It's probably not going to work like it's supposed to. So, now we're left with two junk control arms. And now my truck is down. I can't drive it. And now I got to track down replacement parts. All because I tried to save myself some money. And it didn't work out that way. And I get over here to the last control arm that I haven't touched yet. And whenever I line it up with the new one, I don't know if you can see that, but this is perfectly straight. And this one is tweaked. It is actually angled down a bit. So this control arm got bent sometime in its life. So what's the alternative you say? Well, let's add it up. Okay, shops wanted $600 to do the job. Figured I was going to do the job myself for roughly $200, $250, just pushing in new bushings. Come to find out, there is nothing available for me to change the bushings on this vehicle. The tool, and you know, the funny thing was, the little sidetrack, 
when I brought the tool back to advance with all of the bushings that besides the one that I couldn't bring back because I already installed them but I brought all the other ones back I told them I said man you know your tool bends the crap out of these control arms and they even told me yeah we've had a lot of people say that so if you know the thing tears up your control arms why are you going to rent it out to people and you know the problem is is there's not enough you have to do these in a press okay but the problem is is that they they push out from this direction okay so the the force is applied right here so basically you need something i would say you need a piece of pipe dom tubing that is the circumference of this shoulder right here and the length between there and there that you insert okay so that your puller can exert force down right here and pull this out okay that's what you need for that and the same thing with these right here there has to be a piece of dom tubing or something that is put in here that spreads the force between this point and this point because if you don't spread the force between those two points you end up with this right here this is where all the pushing force is applied and it just bends okay so this this is useless at this point so there has to be something that goes in here and supports it as well as probably between here and that right there is why I'm assuming that a shop a press machine shop charges you so much money to do this job because these parts are so flimsy and they're gonna bend and they're gonna distort and it, it's real quick and easy to mess these things up so they're useless all right so back to the cost so we're at let's see 12 so with the bushings um, I'd say I was about 120 150 somewhere in there with tax a hundred dollars for the tool rental but I was gonna get that back so let's just say 150 bucks for new bushings installed and the labor is my time I'm eating my labor now this is assuming that I'm gonna have this job done in one day this is my work truck I use this to make money every day and this truck has been down for two weeks now because I had to track down replacements so 150 bucks for bushings um, rock auto I got each control arm for roughly 50 bucks so for total cost of $200 I got brand new control arms with brand new ball joints all I gotta do is I gotta transfer my rubber bump stops over the new ones and that's it so in my opinion on an S10 a Sonoma 2000 model and whatever years are similar with similar parts it is not worth your time or your money to try to do this job yourself buy the replacement control arms from rock auto wait for them to come in and just change them all swap them all in a day um, do not try to change your own bushings so there's my experience that's what happened with me you be the judge if you still want to do this job yourself go ahead but to save 50 bucks I really don't understand why somebody would go through the hassle of trying to fabricate you know the correct support because you can't eat like this you can't even put this in the press these don't press out this way they press out from here so you would have to insert a rod here to come through here and then put your tooling on the end of that rod and then push it through that way um, that's a pretty extensive um, supply of pressing tools that I just don't have so there it is that's my experience and you be the judge for yourself all right just wanted to <clears throat> show you guys this last part here I've got all my new suspension installed and um, ran into one issue that you guys should probably be aware of <clears throat> and that is on these lower control arms they got steering stops installed on them okay see that 
This is your steering stop. And this one is a lot fatter than my stock one, which means that my steering radius is greatly reduced. I knew right away as soon as I went to go move my truck that something was wrong. So just to make sure, I took my old ones, my old control arms, and I just cut the rivets off. It's pretty simple. You take a cutoff wheel and you cut a X in it and you take an air chisel and it'll pop the head right off. <clears throat> but um see if we can line this up for you guys. You can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So there's our factory one. Now if I line this up right on the top, okay, you can see there's like a half an inch of material there sticking out. So I'm going to have to take my cutoff wheel and cut that off because my truck's steering ability is greatly reduced with this extra material hanging out. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure why it's there. Um, I made sure to order the right ones off of Rock Auto. There's a bunch of different options. There's uh, different control arms for four-wheel drive, obviously. Um, different control arms for ZR2 package and all that. So I made sure I ordered mine was just a plain old Sonoma SL. Um, no ZR2, no four-wheel drive. So that's the only hook, hiccup, really, <clears throat> was the steering stops are way too long. So I don't know, maybe one of you guys do know maybe the control arms are um the lower control arms are the same for four-wheel drive i'm not really sure that would make sense to me you wouldn't want your spindle to turn as sharp if it's four-wheel drive because that's going to be a lot more angle on the cv axle um other than that i'm not sure why it's so long but that's the only hiccup other than that um Man, what a difference. I mean, I've only driven it around the block, and already I, there's so much, so much better. But, um, all right.